Hey guys, Alex975 here today, bringing you back another video. In today's video, I'm going to be making a short analysis on why I think Amazon understands the superhero market and what people want to see and how they understand their superheroes. And more relevant to this video, their super villains, because that's what I think people want to see right now. And I'll be talking more in depth about that later on in the video. The first show and the most obvious show is The Boys. And that's the first thing I wanted to talk about is the boys and basically why that show is so successful now i'm only going to be making a very brief analysis about this because this video is going to be relatively short and um obviously there's a lot about the boys that is very successful um now i've been watching the boys since around uh, season one i think i just started not when season one came out but i watched it from when just season one was out um, and the boys like there's plenty to say about it Every character in it, nearly every character, is so interesting and not just baseline like Marvel and DC. Now one thing is DC is very more complicated than Marvel, but I'm going to be making most of my comparisons to Marvel because DC are such a weird company and I might be even making a video about that in some near future. But in comparison to Marvel, Marvel are really struggling right now, but their characters are very more baseline like and um, they're very two-dimensional whereas um, amazon's characters and the boys have so many interesting ones like black noir homelander billy butcher uh, mave queen mave and um, starlight huey i can just name them all basically because they're all interesting and um, now there's obviously ones that more people like more than others uh, but their villains seem to be the most loved and the most interesting. Obviously, Soldier Boy and Homelander come to mind. And even Billy Butcher, which can be seen as a villain, depending on what you think. Uh, I think it kind of just goes back and forth. But um, that's what makes him so interesting. And something about Homelander, even though he's so irredeemable, there's just something about him that actually does redeem him. Like, just the sympathy you feel for these characters, Amazon just understands what people are engaged in and i don't think i have to talk too much about why homelander's engaging because there's so many analysis videos on why he is and that's the thing i think that amazon understands their villains as well as their heroes obviously their heroes are still uh, three-dimensional and all but i think their really big selling point is their villains because their heroes even though they're interesting i don't know most people right now just seem to be more interested in villains and they seem to have broken the stereotype of evil superman now i will be getting into another show that i think you all know that does the exact same thing and i've seen some videos saying the evil man evil superman uh, topic is basically overdone and over saturated and yeah it is but even though that has already been oversaturated by the time amazon had made these two shows and um, I still find myself interested in them, and people do too, so it's probably just because they're such great characters that no one cares that they're evil Superman, they just love the concept. And yeah, that's the boys' very, very brief analysis about it, and if you guys want to see me make a full analysis about any of the three shows I'm going to be talking about today, and do be sure to comment down below because any of them I'd love to talk about in a more in-depth way. I obviously just have to see if this video is successful. The second show I wanted to talk about is Invincible. And that's obviously the one where um, the other evil Superman with Omni-Man obviously comes in. And he is so interesting. Arguably more interesting than, Home than Homelander, but I don't know. It really goes back and forth for me. I'd say Homelander does win, but Omni-Man is so interesting as well. And at some stages... He is one of the big, big selling points. Definitely the most interesting character. But one thing that Invincible does, much better than the boys, is their heroes. Because their heroes are actually engaging. And one thing that I've been struggling a lot lately with is looking at heroes. Like, just seeing them and, like, they're not engaging. But Invincible does actually seem to make them quite engaging. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth about, in depth about it, but uh, Mark Invincible, obviously, um, is very interesting and I actually enjoy watching him even though he's probably just pure good like he's not pure good but you know he's the typical hero he still just seems interesting and obviously all of the um, guardians of the globe are all very interesting they're all very interesting I find them and we only get 
very minuscule moments with Omni-Man, the true Omni-Man now, uh, because that's where he's so engaging. That final episode with him, he's so engaging. And even though he is pure evil, much more evil than Homelander, that is not even a question, I think. Um, but he's still redeemed, even though even the thing he's being redeemed of isn't even that redeemable of just being he's a, he you can see the good humanity inside him and that he can understand humanity and that's another thing the boys and invincible i'm really scared for them but at the same time i'm so engaged and ready to see what happens how they're going to wrap things up for both shows i know that's very far into the future i don't know how many seasons of the boys and invincible they're planning on making but their endings like how to end Omni-Man and Homelander stories is going to be so interesting and I think the only way it can end is with their deaths in a kind of redeemable way but at the same time that feels a bit cliche and kind of would take away from Amazon's way. Now maybe there is a way that they'll do it that is actually interesting and there easily could but I feel like that's too predictable but at the same time if you leave them alive you can't like they're good like there's goodness in them so you don't want to see them die as a villain and like irredeemable and their whole lives are basically they were known as a villain and they died a villain and um, but at the same time you can't leave them to just live their lives happily because they're terrible people like it's just that interesting stuff is just why i think invincible and the boys the homelander and omni-man in more specific are so engaging and invincible is sometimes carried by omni-man same with the boys because like your engagement goes up by like a, like 110 percent when you see omni-man on the screen especially omni-man when he's his true self even though there's only glimmers of that and in the final episode you get to see a good chunk of it jesus the final episode of invincible i'm not going to spoil it but man that was a really good episode it was really good and for me it changed that show from being a really good show to an s tier show like from a 7 out of 10 to like a 9 out of 10 maybe 10 out of 10 and um, and yeah i haven't spoiled myself because i know the invincible goes kind of basically uh, page for page off the comics and there's obviously the whole comics are done now but i haven't looked at them because i just want to experience it as the show because i really enjoyed the show and i want to watch it as the show uh, but yeah that's basically invincible uh, i know again another short analysis about it but it's basically just to get the key points of those series out of the way and showing what amazon is great at doing the last show i wanted to talk about is gen v and i know this show hasn't finished and i haven't watched the la last two episodes and um, I either last one or last two, but I have watched uh, nearly every episode and it's been amazing so far. And I think everyone, I've seen video titles saying that it's amazing as well. And people are saying that's really good. And I was honestly really skeptical about Gen V. I'll, I'll be honest, I was thinking that was going to be a flop because I don't like spin-off shows. Nine, nine times out of ten, spin-off shows completely fail. There obviously is the exception with Bear Call Saul and all like shows like that. Bear Call Saul is obviously the one I can think of off the top of my head. But Gen V is seeming like it's doing that too. And the funny thing is, Gen V, uh, I was convinced to watch it because I was taught that there was going to be a lot of the Seven in it, uh, especially Homelander and Soldier Boy. And although there is very, very, very brief scenes with them in it like and they're not in it they're just like videos of them in it very very brief like m way less than i expected it was kind of just like it was like oh like they were trying to get me hooked on it and they got me hooked on it on the characters and i don't care like i would love to see homelander and all that but it's not like i don't care either way it's the show is in very engaging and all the characters again are engaging nowhere as good as the boys and in invincible but still a top tier show and if this show had been like a marvel show now i know obviously with like all the or rating and all that and uh, that obviously can't be on marvel but if a show of this level had come out of marvel it would have been like everyone would have been saying marvel's back and all this but because it's on amazon it's not even the top two shows invincible and the boys are in my opinion 10 times better than gen v but gen v is still that doesn't take away from it gen v is a 7 out of 10 show so far for me and one thing with invincible was invincible was like a 7 out of 10 show for me but the ending brought it up to a 9 out of 10 and gen v could do the same i don't know um 
But yeah, Gen V is very good, and it's the one that I want to talk the briefest about because it hasn't finished, and I don't haven't watched it all yet. But so far, it has been really, really good, and it is just showing that Amazon is um, making a bigger, wider uh, market for their superheroes. At first, they just had the boys and Invincible, like the boys on its own. Now Invincible and now Gen V, and Invincible season two is coming out, and hopefully they'll make more spin-offs. One problem with spin-offs is, is that spin-offs are more likely to fail, but Amazon have proven that they can do it, so if they can keep doing it and keep spreading their market, I could see um, Amazon having not as big a universe as Marvel, but pretty big superhero, supervillain shows, like a huge market, and they'll be dominating. They're dominating already with three shows to their name, and one season on Invincible, one not even a finished season on Gen V, and three seasons on the boys, they're still dominating the superhero supervillain market. So I can only imagine how good they'll be doing when they actually have a full tier tier list of like all their best uh, superhero supervillain shows, which is really exciting. Now the final topic I wanted to talk about was kind of a comparison to Marvel, but I'm not going to go into too much with that uh, because I have other stuff I wanted to talk about. Uh, but the comparison with Marvel um, and more Disney because. That's one thing for me, even though Disney has owned Marvel for like since Avengers 1, like it feels like Disney have got way more involved now and in a bad way. And I think this is everyone knows it. And this is the thing, it don't, like they're all just like factory made. They just all have simple ideas, simple conclusions, all their shows, all their movies. They have a few exceptions with Guardians 4, or Guardians 3 and Spider-Man. No way home, but they're like so little. Like they're they're too god. They're really both god tier. Like they're Guardians Tree, in my opinion, is better, and Spider Man Tree. They're both amazing, but they're like the two black sheep. Like Jesus, Marvel have made so much, and nearly everything is terrible. Like surely you'd make one good show out of it. Now they did make Loki, which is actually decent, and. Uh, Moon Knight, which is decent, but still only good, not great. Like, not like anything Amazon has put out. Amazon seems to, I don't know their back, like what they do with their staff and how they let their freedom work and all that, but it seems like they're giving their staff free will and the or rating really helps them do whatever they like. The or rating, because what you call it, making or rating obviously reduces your audience by a lot. But it's working out for it majorly and it's giving their uh, staff free reign to do whatever they like in their show and it seems to be working out very good and the one thing that is kind of underrated is that people just saying a show is good makes people want to watch it now i don't know much people that watched and um, just say miss marvel i've i didn't finish that but i do know a lot of people that watched invincible and the boys even though they don't have as big a backing to them. I know Invincible had its comics that were very popular, and The Boys had its comics which were reasonably popular, um, but they definitely didn't have as big a backing as Marvel or Disney, basically in general. And it's really worked out great for Amazon Prime. And this is the other little thing I wanted to talk about, is Amazon Prime, I didn't notice, but this was a weird fact that I found out that I'm really impressed and shocked by, is that the top streaming platforms the ones that have the most subscriptions is obviously number one is netflix but the more interesting one is amazon prime is number two and disney is number three and that to me is great in my opinion i hate disney at the moment i really do hate disney they're really ruining everything they're ruining star wars they're ruining marvel they're ruining everything they get their hands on and amazon's so original and i thought amazon was an underrated company but it seems Amazon are doing great. And it's really good to see if Amazon can keep the way they're going. Now, people would have been saying only like five years ago that Disney are doing great with Marvel, basically. And they're doing uh, Star Wars, probably different. Um, like they had The Mandalorian, but that was literally it. Uh, they've ruined Star Wars as a whole, like really ruined Star Wars. Uh, and I think the annoying thing to me is, is that people aren't making their opinions up. Like the one thing is, prequel trilogy in star wars people didn't like they didn't respect them as much like obviously the revenge of the sith they did respect that but the other two like people are only talking good about them now because disney is doing crap 
But, like, that's the annoying thing. You're recognising it when it's too late. And it's like, you can't do nothing about it now. Like, you can't really. Uh, you can have Hayden Christensen come in for a couple cameos, but you can't really do anything with that now. If you had done that when those were popular, maybe you could have then. And that's one thing that there's kind of a mob mentality where people are um, not making their own opinions, which is very annoying because it's like they're just saying what other people are saying, which is very annoying. And they should watch the shows without watching any opinionated videos and just seeing what they make up their mind and then watch the opinionated videos and listen to their critiques, but not change your mind unless you actually like because i can't see you like liking a show and going to watch the critiques and then going i didn't like that show that just doesn't make sense so yeah that's basically it that's all i wanted to talk about and uh, this video has been a lot longer than i expected now like i know it's not very long but it's still a lot longer than i expected but obviously um this video is experimental because i haven't made many commentary videos i've literally only made uh, the one and now this is going to be two but yeah, uh, I'm really passionate about making these and I really, really do enjoy making them. And if you guys watch these enough and like the video and subscribe, obviously, I definitely will make more. If you guys comment the boys, anything, any of the three shows I just talked about, I am hugely passionate about talking about. And any video, all of these I'm really passionate about talking about. Now, I don't really know the plan for how long I'm going to be making these commentary videos. Probably for a month and I'm going to see how they do. Probably 10 videos. Okay, longer than a month then. So, 10 commentary videos and I want to see where the market is at. Because, obviously, like the last one got 100 views, which is good. Good. Just, that's it. Not amazing, not terrible. 100 views. It's basically what I'm getting at my Minecraft tutorials right now. So, that's good news is in its... Um, doing what needs to be at least doing but the minecraft videos are dying right now they'll go back up um eventually but the the commentary videos maybe it's because i was talking about uh the wii or something we'll have to see with this topic but basically i have to see if there's actually a big market in commentary that i can get into basically because um obviously i can't be doing it if there's not a big market that i can like get views off and all that because unfortunately even though i would like to say oh, i'll make videos that i'm passionate about that's to an extent but it also has to be uh, with views because i could be talking about a very obscure thing that's getting 20 views and for me views and like doing well on youtube motivates me to make more and that is one of my passions so that is basically i'm not saying that all I'm looking for is views, but it's obviously a major factor, and it's probably around 50%. Passion and like success kind of go 50 hand in hand, like 50-50. And that's being fully honest, maybe not 50-50, but it's pretty much 50-50. And I am making Minecraft tutorials still on my other channel, Axon 758, which are doing good. And it's grand if I have three channels all producing. Because I am making a video on Alex M975. I don't know if it's coming out after or before this. But the video, the commentary is already done, which is usually the most hard bit because I don't have time to make commentary. But now that I have the commentary done, it'll definitely be coming. It'll definitely be coming out today. And um, I can assure you of that. Um, and I don't know if I said that before, but yeah, I don't really know about schedules and all that. No schedules be set out for any channels until I can see what the market is for this. A very experimental period in the channel, and it's a really weird time because. I don't know, I was never expecting to change topic, but I really enjoyed my first commentary video and I really enjoyed making the commentary video on this channel and I see a market in it and I probably should have given it more time, but I'm trying it now. Now, it's not like I'll lose a ton of subscribers on this channel and it's not like uh, ever, like I can't go back to Minecraft tutorials. So I'm like, why not? I'm passionate about doing this. And right now the Minecraft tutorial market, I'm not missing out on much because there's not much apart from shaders that are getting views. So yeah, that's all for today's video. Uh, sorry I went on a bit of a tangent there just talking about my channel. Um, but I don't really get the opportunity to talk about my channel apart from in my videos, which is kind of obvious. But yeah, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.